Let's talk uh, more about that. Our international affairs commentator, Doug Herbert, joins. So, Doug, uh, for six months, Donald Trump's been largely silent or silenced, depending uh, how you look at it. But he's back now, isn't he? Yeah, look, anyone who uh, thought that uh, they could, one, you know, the social media ban from Facebook, Twitter, other pr platforms meant that they could sleep through the night, throw away their uh, anxiety medication. They're being proven very wrong. Uh, Donald Trump, look, he, he, had, he weaponized social media as president. He used it. It was his oxygen. It allowed him, uh, in many respects, to reach the broadest audience possible. His critics would say also to do the most, the maximal damage uh, to American democracy possible. Um, but he, although he has been as you said, silenced. And although the ban is ongoing, Stuart, he's st still very much out there. You mentioned that he's now launched what's called sort of a new social media platform. It's not a Twitter. It's not a Facebook. It can't. It doesn't allow for user interaction. And you, it's more like a glorified blog, uh, sort of like the old style websites where they're like press releases up there. And he can reach a lot of people with it. But let's not be fooled. Donald, Donald Trump Trump remains the paramount force in, uh, concern, in Republican politics, if you want to call it that, in the United States. Uh, he has a giant megaphone, and he is using that megaphone more than ever in the past week or so, Stuart, to do what he did as president throughout his presidency, to settle scores with real and perceived enemies everywhere. And his latest uh, targets have been uh, Mitch McConnell, the now Senate minority leader, who he called gutless and clueless uh, this week. Uh, he's targeted uh, Liz Cheney as well. And he's uh, targeted uh, Mitt Romney, uh, also the, uh, the, Utah, uh, the, the, the Utah Senate as well as his own former vice president, Mike Pence. Uh, you know, Mike Pence, who loyally stuck by him, he has basically targeted all these people. I mean, various things he said, but the main thing in all of his accusations is that, is that their criminal offense, as he sees it, was failing to back him in, uh, in his claims, in his false claims, uh, that the election was stolen from him, the 2020 election. He is out there right now, lashing into his enemies, releasing statements on his website, uh, and he is making it known to his uh, critics, he's hinting that he may be back with his own social media platform very soon. What about the Republican Party itself uh, as a whole then, Doug? I mean, uh, some saying it's at war with itself. Yeah, look, you know, Liz Cheney, who's the number three in the Republican Party right now, is in danger of seeing herself ousted from her leadership position. A couple of months back, the Republicans actually closed ranks around her when she was one of the 10 Republicans uh, uh, who chose to vote to impeach Donald uh, Donald Trump. Uh, well, she was, she, she was very critical of Donald Trump uh, in the first place, but she also thought that he should be impeached. Uh, at that time, Republicans closed ranks around her. That is, they supported her, even though uh, she was at odds with that most of the members uh, thought, which was basically still uh, believing in Donald Trump's election lie, uh, paying fealty to Donald Trump, even though uh, he was on his way out of office. Uh, that said, uh, right now, Liz Cheney, uh, you know, she is right now the victim of a party that can no longer, it seems, brook any dissent. She warned that it's becoming an anti-democratic uh, Trump uh, party, Trump's cult of personality party. What that means is, you know, recent polls showed that about three quarters of Republicans, a little less, Yes. Uh, fully embrace, still believe that Joe Biden is the illegitimate president of the United States, i.e. that Donald Trump's so-called big lie about the election being stolen. They absolutely believe that. So you have a major, the major opposition party in the United States right now, not believing in the illegitimacy of the current sitting president. This is also a party that more and more is not steering away from misinformation and disinformation, but openly embracing it and following in Trump's footsteps by often weaponizing it to speak directly to a base of supporters that more than ever, far from distancing themselves from their uh, champion now that he's out of office, are backing him more than ever. Trump himself, Stuart, said this week that he is 100 percent thinking of running for president again. I know a lot of our viewers, a lot of people out there are sick and tired of hearing Trump's name and probably say, why is Doug still talking about Trump? Unfortunately, I'm talking about Trump today because uh, you ignore him at his own peril. He is a potent force right now out there in America, uh, and he is going to be back in 2024. If not him, one of his surrogates who will act like him, perhaps look like him, speak like him, and say the same thing that his base wants to hear. He could very well, he or a proxy, be reelected in 2024. That's where the Republican Party stands today. Doug, thanks very much. Doug Herbert, our international affairs commentator there.